quite frankly, um, it's borderline racist. Oh. Um, some of your questions that <laughs> you're putting is it, here. Is it, is it really? Yeah, uh, it To is. ask the question about how someone identifies and how it is that the legislation, the framework does that in a practical, that's racist, is it? Uh, borderline, yes. Borderline racist, the, the, is it really? In light of the fact that we're about to embark on a uh, referendum uh, with respect to the voice, um, obviously, it raises issues of identity, uh, becomes a very critical issue. So I'm wondering, straight off the bat, if, if someone can tell me who, who is it that decides who is Aboriginal and how do they do it? Um, thank you for that. Uh, we've got relevant officer coming to the, the table. Um, uh, what I would say is that there was a, um, a, a test around Aboriginality that was set out uh, in the Mabo decision, uh, the three-part test, uh, and that has uh, continued to guide uh, the uh, Commonwealth Government and other uh, governments in terms of um, uh, the definition of Aboriginality. But I'll, I'll just see if Mr Lewis has anything to add to that. Uh, <clears throat> the only thing I would add to that, Senator, is um, if the... Uh, I, I think... The Secretary is quite right. There's a legal test that's been recognised um, uh, in a number of cases. I think it's also the case that uh, the Australian government uh, might not uh, applies a, a different approach sometimes in relation to different programs, uh, depending on what's considered to be appropriate. Um, I'll, I'll leave that. Mm. So, do you want to step me through that? And what does that look like? So, so somebody says, "I want to go to Parliament uh, under the Voice, and I'm Aboriginal." How, how does that work? Well, if the question is um, directly in relation to the voice, um, I mean, I guess I'll just start by saying that um, the, the agency that's leading the policy work on the voice is the National Indigenous Australians Agency. Mm. Um, but uh, my understanding um, is that at this stage, there's been a, a draft constitutional amendment proposed by the Prime Minister and questions such as, uh, who would be eligible to be a member of The Voice or who would um, participate in choosing members is uh, a matter that um, would be dealt with in any legislation establishing The Voice okay, so or, or, or in the establishment of The Voice in some manner. So that sounds very complicated. Under normal circumstances, there is, what, a three-part test based on dissent, identification and acceptance by community in broad terms? Is that that's That's basically it? That's right. So would that, is that likely to be, I mean, that, that is the, the generally ex accepted and, and I, I would say difficult um, assessment of, you know, it's adopted by the legislation, some of the, some of the court decisions? Uh, Mr Lewis, I think there's two parts to the Senator's questions. One is a general question and then the second part is around the voice. So I think the general question hasn't been answered yet. Thank you, Chair. So I think the general question is that... that what you've outlined, Senator, is a summary of the test that's commonly applied. Mm. Um, the question of exactly uh, what the arrangements will be mm. for the voice sure. is something um, a matter for the government in consultation with others, mm. and I understand that no decisions have been made about that at sure. this stage. And, and so in relation to the three-part test, though, how does, a, how does a person, how is a person going to ever be able to prove their descent? What, what is that going to look like? Is it going to look like having one grandparent or a great-grandparent that was Aboriginal, and how is that going to be proven in, in, uh, in enough to satisfy the, you know, any, any constitutional uh, provisions that may be required in order to enter that, that body? Well, Senator, again, I, I would say that uh, the question as to how these matters will be determined in well, relation let's say right to the now. voice... Let's say right is, now, is, as, as of today, you want to, you want to, uh, you want to establish your uh, lineage as a person, how, how would that work today? Uh, well, Senator, as I said, my understanding, and it's not, not an area um, within my res policy responsibilities or even the department, but I, I understand that for different purposes, uh, different types of tests are applied. Um, if there is a test that requires an element of dissent, um, then that might be uh, shown by reference to to documents provided by the um, Aboriginal person in question. Right at the moment now, we're dealing with agencies, including 
uh, First Nations justice policy and so on and so forth. There has to be somebody in this room, there are about 60 people in this room here, all looking very important. Um, there has to be someone in this room that can answer the question though of how someone goes about physically proving or practically proving their lineage for the purpose of, of, of whatever it may be. Let's put the voice aside for a moment. What, what percentage does somebody have to be of Aboriginal descent to be deemed Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander? Senator, I, I, I think um, I, I wouldn't be using that type of language, which... Um... Well, if, you, if, you, if you're 95% Irish, Scottish, are you going to be 5% five, five are you going to be eligible for the, the voice to Parliament? Uh, I think getting into a conversation about percentage well, I, I, is, is not appropriate. There is well, well, uh, a very well, long-standing test that's been set out in uh, a High Court decision right. that, so, that everyone takes regard so to. So my, my question is, how does that operate practically? And no one can seem to tell me the answer to that. We haven't even got to the second and third limbs of that test yet. Um, you can understand how there'd be cause for concern when we can't even identify what it is on a practical basis that will identify someone as of a particular ethnic category. Uh, that, is, that is of concern, I would have thought. Um, what, what, what I would say and what I think what my colleagues have indicated is uh, this test does, it goes back to um, uh, the Mabo decision. Sure, sure. sure. Uh, I understand, it, I understand it the history. No, no, Antic, I understand the history no, of no, it. No, Senator Antic, you but will but let I'm the secretary... The question. Senator what Antic, I'm, please let the secretary finish her answer. What I am saying in a practical way that that has guided uh, how uh, people can interact with a whole range of Commonwealth programs for decades now. Uh, I think uh, officers at the National Indigenous Australians Agency will be able to give you uh, a much more detail of how that happens practically. Uh, so but that has been the, the guiding uh, test for decades now. The Attorney General's Department, the, the department that is uh, given the responsibility of uh, overseeing legislation in this country, cannot tell me what I would have to do in order to identify as Aboriginal for the purposes of, of, of any of these. Just give me one example. Well, I think, uh, as I've said, it's, it, it's set out, to, uh, it's around establishing ancestry, it's about being um, accepted by the relevant um, uh, community, and it's about self-identification. So, so, so what happens then if the community, for political purposes, um, simply rejects someone on the basis of their descent? I think you're putting forward hypotheticals. No, well, but, no, but, no, but, the, but your government minister is, is, is in the process of legislating, the, uh, or trying to legislate, taking to a referendum, one of the most important and constitutional reforms of our lifetimes. And, and nobody can tell me well, how think, we define the I category think, we're looking for. I think for. that's an important point you make there, that we are um, hopefully going to be legislating this one day. And as yeah, a and hopefully member you'll, of, you'll, you'll have some answers. As a member you. of parliament, um, you will have the opportunity to have input into that. Yeah, and, um, and, and the so the, well, I would like to if there were about. more information, but there is, I, there, I mean, well, you, you, what, what happens? talking so, in is, hypotheticals no, and riddles. No, we're not talking in hypotheticals. Um, if I, I know, to, if I I know what you're seeking uh, to achieve. Uh, quite frankly, um, it's borderline racist, oh. um, some of your questions <laughs> that you're putting here. Is, it, is it really? Yeah, uh, it To is. ask the question about how someone identifies and how it is that the legislation, the framework does that in a practical, that's racist, is it? Uh, borderline, yes. Borderline racist, the, the, is it really? The path that you're going down. Is it down. really, yeah. Um, if well, that's I mean, where you want to head, Senator Well, I just want to make answer. I mean, I, what I'm looking for Senators. is a simple we're answer. Here, um, we're here, um, the department have given you no answers uh, an whatsoever. answer to this. Um, it might be one, might not be one that you're satisfied. Well, it's not an um, answer, I'm not satisfied being, with no answer. Uh, one that has been, um, uh, answered by the secretary and the department. So, so look, I'm going to wind this up because this is really not helpful. But is it so? Is it the case that therefore that you cannot tell me that if I have a 10% a lineage as a, as a person, an Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander person, that that will be enough, or will, in order to qualify for any of these legislative provisions? No, nobody here can tell me what who, who actually is a, is an Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander per, person for the purposes of the law in this country. Uh, I, I don't think that's uh, correct, Senator. And as I said, uh, there is a, a long-standing Commonwealth Convention. It's that three-part test, and that test is utilised, uh, has been utilised for decades to, uh, in in legal contexts, in the context of access to um, right. programs, uh, and is well established. Here's a final question, Chair. Are you concerned? that this process is going to lead to people who wrongly identify themselves as Indigenous or Torres Strait Islander or Aboriginal becoming 
qualified for uh, for the voice for whatever other program it may be I, I, I think you're sort of uh, asking a question uh, that uh, is based around a hypothetical right. uh, the whole thing's hypothetical Sorry? The, the whole thing's hypothetical. There's not a single answer. There hasn't, there's just not a single... No, nobody seems to be able to tell me what, what qualifies for the purposes of this categorisation. So it could just be anybody. Anybody's just going no, to be able to... No, you have to meet the three-part test. Which you can't describe. I don't think I have. described it. Anyway. You haven't described it. So, Minister, Minister, in practical terms, in practical terms, what does it look like when you say uh, you are, you're a, what, what, does it, what does it take to prove dissent in this country? Well, I think, as no, no, the what does it Secretary take? had said, um, there's um, legal precedent uh, in that regard. What does it take, um, Minister? What do you have to Senator do practically? Senator Antic, the Minister is answering your question, well, if you'd really like to let him answer around. it. Um, you might not like the answer, but he's going to well, be able to give to like it. it. I, appreciate, I appreciate that. You might not like the answer. But the minister is answering. In practical it. terms, what does it look like? Senator Antic, do not, do not interrupt me. I haven't given a ruling, but I've given you a clear direction to stop. Um, as the secretary was saying, there's been uh, well-established legal precedent in this regard, um, and how it applies to government policies. Um, it operated under your government um, when you guys were in power. We weren't, we weren't legislating uh, for a, a race-based division. Well, that is just completely untrue. Hmm. Well, were we? Huh? Well, so we were, what we I'm were saying is the legal before. precedent um, was applied when you guys were in government and it's the same one that still applies today. Your government. In terms of the voice, okay. um, what we have said is that uh, further details um, would be legislated after hopefully a successful outcome in the referendum. So I, I just, um, the opportunity is... for um, opposition members of parliament is to engage in that process yeah. in good faith. So that's what I we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do Senator today Antic. to get a simple answer. Just, thank you, Chair. My last uh, question. Last this question, is this is uh, quite extraordinary in the sense that I could sit here for the better part of 10 minutes, 15 minutes and still not be able to have that question, that simple question about what it would take to identify as an Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander in this country, and nobody in this room can answer it. 